everyone, it is Jackie with Positive Preschool, and tonight we are talking all about a polar animal theme, those crazy winter months when it's cold and snowy, or maybe you live down south and maybe it's just chilly um, and you don't get snow. So I have ideas for you to have snow in your classroom too, even if you don't have real snow. Um, so why don't you tell me in the comments, pop down in the comments, tell me when you do a polar animal theme. Do you do it at the beginning of January? Did you do it in December? Do you wait till February? Or do you mix it in with a like general um, winter theme? So I just love getting to know you guys and you guys getting to know each other too because it's so fun to hear what everybody else does um, around the country. So what I'm going to do, just like always, is I am going to walk you around my classroom and I'm going to show you all the things we're doing for our polar animal theme. And um, I will also show you, I don't know if you can see behind me, our um, ice skating rink that is in the Germanic Play Center. And I also want to say, um, I teach half day, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. So I will not have time to do all the activities I show you, but I got out a whole bunch. That way, if you teach full day or um, maybe one activity will work for you and another one won't, that way you can kind of pick the activities that will work for you and your kiddos this year, and then maybe you can save the rest for a winter theme or next year. So, like I said, I have a whole bunch of stuff out I want to show you guys. I'll try and talk closer to the mic, so hopefully that will help. All right, so for writing, um, since the polar animal theme is all about ice and snow, there are so many different ways you can do writing. Um, in my polar animal pack, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do for writing. These are, I in my pack, I have um, letter, shape, and number cards um, in my polar animals math and literacy pack. So, you can do those, and you can use Play-Doh with these, you can use dry erase markers, but my kiddos are loving these, and we um, actually use them with foil. So, just grab some aluminum foil from your cabinet, and then grab a dry erase marker, um, and then they can write the number, and look, it works just like a dry erase marker. So, it's just like literally like a piece of foil. So you can write like sight words, they can write their name, um, you can do all kinds of writing. And what we did is we did it for table time and we talked about how if it, if it gets crumpled they can flatten it. After they were done with that they crumpled it up and then we put it in the dramatic or in the block center and they used it as icebergs so that we weren't like wasting it. Um, but yeah, so you can totally use it as, you know, to write with instead of a dry erase. Um, and dry erase board. And, you can, and now if you also have mirrors in your classroom, you can try writing on mirrors so it would be just like writing on ice. Um, again, just another fun way to write. You can always use a writing tray and this just one just has salt and glitter in it so it's kind of like snow. So they can make letters or numbers and kind of shape to erase. And you, if you don't have my cards, you can use any flash cards that you have. You can also make whoa, glitter um, hair gel bags and do it that way as well. So you could, this is just a baggie with hair gel and some food coloring and then they can make, it's really hard to do um, on the phone while you, I'm doing my video, but they can write it in there and then just make sure you tape the bag close. You could also put conditioner, or wait, sorry, this one's lotion. Put lotion in a baggie and it looks like snow and then they can write in the snow. So there are a ton of different things you can do. And this one is just clear hair gel with um, just regular hair gel from the dollar store with um, glitter. So, alrighty. So yeah, so so many different things you can do for writing. So ditch the word sheets for this study and pull out some foil or some baggies. Just do whatever, just do just ditch the worksheets because if it's like, if you guys are like me, we are not going outside very much lately because it's so cold. Um, and then here is a fun, these are actually like a clip it polar animal game and it has nothing to do with sound. Um, it's just matching the lowercase and uppercase letters. And if you guys have bingo chips in your classroom, try instead of using like clothespins sometimes, 
put um, bingo chips out for boards, like a cover-up board, and they can use the magnetic wand, and they can pick up the chips that way. So it's just a fun take on all those, on all the clip it um, games you have. Just use try using something different to cover it up with, and they love using these magnet boards to um, erase their board. It's really fun. And then another beginning a beginning sound game you can play. This is in my polar animal pack, um, but they take the icon and then they match it to the letter like igloo we'll go with i and i just attach these with velcro and then i have them in a little cup and I, they're also which i don't have these prepped um but there are also you can do uppercase with lowercase matching as well if you want it all right so those are some fun literacy games i'm going to show you some more i'm going to walk you over to my um my writing center so you can see i have my cards out here oh and another fun thing you can do um with the cards and if you don't have the cards you can totally do this too they can use an animal and they can slide the animal to make the letter um kind of like the car we use cars you know to make the letters for transportation but they can slide the animals because a lot of these animals slide on their bellies or they swim so that's really fun too and i just have these out with dry erase because my kiddos are just really loving um, dry erase and then we have this hide and seek game we are playing I actually introduced it last week um, and we did this as a transition and we're um, I'm gonna put the um, the number cards in next week and so, so we're using this as a transition to I literally take this board and just bring it over to circle but so that I, there's these little icebergs and then I, they close their eyes or their friend can close their eyes and they have, I hide the iceberg. And then they come up and they say, is it hiding behind K? And they can look and it's, oh, look, it is hiding behind K. And then they can mark it off on their boards. So we have never played a game like this before. So I, we're doing it as a transition. And then it's also in the center for, um, to play independently which is really fun. And this is just a pocket chart I got from the dollar store or from Target Dollar Spot. But I did have to cut some of these because it's some of the holes are a little little. Um, so in order for my kiddos to get this out, I had to cut them a little bit. So I don't know how long this will last because um, I have a feeling that all the string will come out. But you can totally just use a regular pocket chart for this game as well. And then at the writing desk, um, I put out pens for this unit because I have all kinds of purple and blue, shades of blue pens and they are loving writing with my pens. I had three boys at my writing table today. Um, three boys who don't really usually go to the writing table were at the writing table because I had pens out and they were very excited about these um, metallic crayons. So they're kind of like a shiny crayon. I got them at Michael's. Um, but yeah, they're really fun to write with. Here, I'll kind of show you guys. But they're kind of like shiny. Just something different. Because you got to just keep it keep it fresh and keep it exciting. Um, and just see what your kiddos like. Like, we're probably going to have pens out for a while. Because if I can get some of these um, friends who don't like to go to the writing center, get them to go there independently. Like, that, like I hit the jackpot there, right, guys? Um, so yeah. And then here is my bookshelf. And I don't know about you, but the polar animal books, you guys, like not, <laughs> I thought they're, they're, it's a little hard, I think, to find really good polar animal books. I actually ordered a couple off Amazon and they haven't come yet. Um, but let me show you a couple of my favorites. Um, the Story of Snow is awesome. It's a great nonfiction about snow and snowflakes. Um, and the pictures are gorgeous. Um, so that one's really good. And then I love this series, um, A Day in the Life Polar Animals. Um, and I want to say I got these from Scholastic, but I'm sure you can find them on Amazon too. Um, but yeah, these are really great too. And then, oh, no, oh I, I do love Three Snow Bears by Jan Brett. So it's a um, fractured fairy tale. So it's um, like a three bears type um, book. And it's awesome. And I mean, y'all, Jan Brett, like... She's amazing. 
Um, and then you gotta read Polar Bear, Polar Bear, what's in here. So since there's so many great nonfiction books, why not um, read some nonfiction books during Circle? And I think um, as teachers, sometimes we forget about like re reading really good nonfiction books. Um, so read some of those nonfiction books and really when you're reading those books, notice the pictures, um, cause the pictures tell you a lot of um, important details and how, you know, the illustrations have, you know, lit, they label things in, or not the illustrations, sorry. The um, photographs are labeled a lot in um, nonfiction books. And then I just drew a little simple polar bear. And then after we read, we went around and talked about um, facts from the book that we remember. But it was funny because they were telling me like things that they thought they knew about bears. And I, we were, it was, um, it was a good discussion about, well, these are things that we we learned from the book. So this isn't something like from your mind. So they're like, oh, polar bears, they, they, they live in dens, which polar bears don't live in dens. They live in, um, they sleep, they make, they sleep in like a little, they just like dig a little, like kind of a little hole. But, um, so we talked, it was just a really good time to talk about um, what's, what is a fact and kind of what is just something that you know from your memory. So it's just a fun little, fun little thing to do for circle. And then we also, I got these um, a few years ago from Scholastic. I got a Penguin's ABC and a Penguin's 123 book. And we read the book. And as we read the book, they wrote their numbers down. So I got, I snuck in an assessment um, this week. So we did this one today. And then we did this one on, um, on Monday. And then if you have any counting books, um, since the polar animal books are a little scarce, <laughs> um, go ahead and just print off some pictures from Google Images and you put a magnet or Velcro on the back and as you read, you can make it into an addition or subtraction story based on um, what it is. So that's just some fun things you can do for a circle. Oh, and one more game, I forgot this one. So this one is really fun. Um, so. I don't have it all, so I haven't, I'm gonna actually have this out new for Friday, because we're gonna do this theme again next week. So before I didn't have these out this week, because um, I don't put everything out all at once, so that way it's not so overwhelming. But these are from my Polar Animal Centers, and there's just a little bag, so I don't have the magnet out yet. But so they grab a letter, and they can either identify the letter, or they can build a sight word, and then they feed the bear. Now, some of my friends are just going to be working on identifying letters. Some of them, my three-year-olds and some of my pre-K, might just be working on identifying these uppercase letters. So grab, you know, picking up a magnet letter and then feed, identifying it and feeding it to the walrus. You can also um, use the name cards with it, which are really fun. I've seen some people take the mailboxes from the Target Dollar Spot and put the, these little faces on them so then they have a little box so it's not so flimsy. But it kind of works for whatever you want. So I'm, I'm really excited to do this with them on Friday. So this will be fun. And again, this is in my Polar Animals Math and Literacy Centers pack. So let me show you some math. So this is a, oh, let's talk manipulatives first because I don't know about you, but polar animals are hard to find. So, um, Take some of these gems from the dollar store and just draw a little polar bear face on them. And now you have polar bear little counters. So this is fun if you can't find um, a lot of polar bear counters. Um, these I think were in the Target dollar spot before Christmas. These are from the Kinder Crate, the, the monthly subscription box I get. Um, yes, so, so some people are asking is the um, all these printables um, in the Math and Literacy Center's pack, and they are. Everything I'm showing today is in, the, is in that one. So these are also on Amazon, um, and I can put the link to that afterwards. Um, but they're little polar bear mini erasers. But again, you can just go to the dollar store and grab some gems. These are the big ones. They're not the tiny ones. Um, and just draw a face on them so you can have some fun Arctic animal or polar animal themed counters. You can also, if you have like ice cubes, these are those plastic ice cubes from the dollar store over the summer. These are great for a polar animal theme. Cotton balls, you can just pretend they're snow. Like these are great for a 
um, polar animal theme. So if you have any of these foam snowflakes, these are great for uh, a math game. So basically just write numbers on them and then they have to identify the number or you can put dots if you have littler guys or you can do both and they can just count how many. Um, like so this one would be five so they would just have to put five on the snowflake. So really again, super easy, just cotton balls and some foam um, number cards. <clears throat> and you can also put letters on them and then they have to match the magnet letters to these. These little tweezers are from Walmart and I wanna say they're around a dollar-ish. So they're really fun. They kinda look like, like little gloves for a winter thing. These build 10 cards or 10 mats are in my um, polar animal centers. Um, so they pick a card, there's all the cards and they pick a card and um, they have to put that many on to make 10. So they would put three snowballs and seven ice cubes to make 10. So just again, just another fun way to build 10, which is informal addition, you know, decomposing numbers, all of those great math skills. So this is a really fun activity. So it's, sorry if the light's kind of weird. It's, um, it's kind of, uh, like glistening from the foil. So I just took a tray and I covered it in foil. And then these are those like single serve ice cream cups. Um, like you'd like do for birthday parties or something or you know, you can get like the ice cream cups at like Walmart or something. But then I just took, I wrote numbers in the bottom of them. And then what they can do is, and this, this part's up to you, but I was letting them throw because we haven't, um, you know, if you can't go outside sometimes, they can throw the animal in the cup and they have to identify the number and then put that many in. One, two, three, four. So yeah, so you can just have a little poor animal and they can put it in the cup and then put that many in. So these are just those little gems from the dollar store. So some people are asking what other ideas can you use these for? You can also use them to build with them. So they, you could like roll a dice and then they would have to put that many on the table or build a structure with that. Or you can use them for like a STEM challenge and they can build things for the little animals. You can put these in the sensory table. I've also seen um, somebody on Instagram like wrote letters on them. So like they wrote an A on this one and then a B on this one. So they made them into like letter, letter ice cubes. So you can do that too. So those are a fun, a fun little thing. Um, and Stephanie said put some double sided sticky tape on the bottom of these so they don't so they don't like go all over like mine did. So Stephanie, that is a great idea. <laughs> I will definitely be doing that um, later. So let's keep going with some more fun math. I'm gonna walk you over here. Um, so we have our polar animal stew, which of course is from the polar um, from my counting stew pack. And then we have another fun little counting game. This one is the, they're building a, um, a snow pit for the polar bear, or you can say it's a den for the mama bear, because polar bears, the only time they build a den is when they are having babies. So you can make a little mama bear dens. Okay. So they have to count the different ways the numbers are represented. Sorry about the glare. And then they have to sort them. And it goes up to 15. And remember, if you have little guys, um, just do it up to five. Or if you have big guys, go all the way up to 15. And then here's just a fun little game where they are taking the ice and they are matching the penguins and the, um, the putting the same shape penguins on the iceberg. And then they can build the shape with the pipe cleaners, which I'm not doing a very good job while I'm on camera. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna switch over and I wanna show you what is in the sensory table. So in the sensory table, we have Insta Snow. And um, we've had this out for a week now, so it's starting to get like clumpy, like you can definitely tell like they've been playing with it. It's not fluffy and pretty anymore, but they are like loving it. Um, I actually got this Insta Snow from my Kinder Crate. Um, but you can also get it on Amazon, and I link the kind that they um, got us on Amazon on my on my link, so I can link that in a little bit. But this is two 
two gallons or whatever, I guess. Um, so two gallon bags. Um, so it makes a lot, but once they start kind of smushing it together, um, and then I also put some small glass gems in and I put some big glass gems in from the dollar store and again, more of these ice cream cups and there's little polar animals hidden in there. And I don't put the top on. That way, I, I don't wanna like contain the moisture because I don't want, I don't, I, I've never put the top on so I don't know, it might mold, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I just keep the top off to make sure, you know, it doesn't like, you know how sometimes if you put the top on and there's moisture in it, it kind of gets funky. So if you don't want to do Insta Snow in your sensory table, try um, just baking soda. So grab like a, a, ba a big bag of baking soda from like Sam's or something and put that in there. And that can be your snow. You can also use flour. Um, so put the flour in there. Um, but if you have kiddos with allergies that might bother them, it just um, depends on your class. So you can use flour, you can use um, baking soda. You can also just put cotton balls in and cotton balls are really fun and then they can kind of like take them apart and things. So those are all different options. And you can also put in um, snow dough and snow dough is one cup baby oil, three cups cornstarch. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you the recipe and I'll let you guys screenshot it. So I'll do that in just one second. Alrighty. So, I'm going to show you some art stuff and the penguin directed drawing. So, as you can see, all the way back here are our penguin directed drawings that we did. So, we went back to school last Wednesday. So, we're actually doing our polar animal theme for kind of like two and a half weeks. Um, so, here they are. You guys, how cute are these? Oh my gosh. So, I'll tell you the process on these in just a little bit. Just wanted, I just had to like show you guys. Oh, so proud of my kiddos. So here is the freebie. So if you've done directed drawings in your classroom before, you can just put this out or you can put this in your writing center as well. And what they do is um, if you've never done a directed drawing before, you can do it um, during small group. Um, so what you do is if you haven't done it before, you would draw it on your paper you would draw the first step and then they would do it. And then you would draw the second step and then they would do it. So you would draw the body on your page and then they would draw the body. And then they, you would draw the belly and then they would draw the belly. And then after they make one, then you can just put this in the center. Sorry. You can just put this in the center and they have some visual directions. And then what we, and you can either use oil pastels to draw the penguin or you can use a um, sharpen markers. It's totally up to you. And then what we did to create this kind of like crystal background is they painted it with watercolor. And as they were painting, they sprinkled in this kosher salt and they just like left it in there. And so they would stay, um, ooh, sorry about that. So they would paint a little bit and they would sprinkle the kosher salt in because it has to be really wet to soak up. And then they would put the whole thing with the kosher salt on the drying rack. And then the next day they came, they got to rub off. You can tell they didn't get all the salt off this one. They could rub off the salt. And then what is left, put that in there, are these like beautiful little crystals. Um, and that's totally flat. Like it's just a beautiful texture on these beautiful paintings. And if you have three-year-olds, just do the watercolor and let them sprinkle in the salt. You don't have to have the penguin on there. Um, or if you have, if your kids are capable of doing it, you know, totally do the director drawing on it first and then do it. And then maybe to say, you know what, you guys did a penguin. Oh, why don't you guys try drawing some other animals? So that's why I have this right here. So what they do is if they want to do this, they just grab the whole tray and they'll take the whole tray um, and then they'll just put it on the table and then they can do um, the directed drawings. And you can get, I used um, Crayola oil pastels. I actually had to buy some new ones because mine are getting, I only had like two black, two itty bitty tiny little black ones left. Um, and they of course, you know, everybody wants black for all the polar animals. Um, so I bought some new ones, but these I got at Hobby Lobby, but I just use the Crayola brand, they work fine. But I know you can get them on Amazon and different brands too. And then for my watercolors, I just keep a empty cup and then I just keep some brushes in. That way, if they want to do watercolor, all they have to do is just, you know, fill up their water cup and then they are good to go. 
And then the watercolors are right here, which you can see I got on clearance at Home Target. Oh, and these little cups that you see all over my room that I use, these are from the dollar store. They're in like the party section with like the fancy trays and things. And then here is the Polar Animal um, Play-Doh tray. So I put out some snowflakes and that way they, they're pretending these are like iceberg. I call them iceberg, <laughs> iceberg, um, iceberg cookie cutters. And then I just use some like rhinestones I got one year in clearance. And then again, more glass gems, big and small, and then some polar animals. And almost all of my polar animals are those Tob, I think they are polar animals from like Michael's. And I just buy them when either they're on sale or I use my coupon. Um, so yeah, so I think I, ha I got like three containers of them maybe or so. And then the seals are from like a, like an ocean animal set, I think. So yeah, and then we have slime. So, and look at the, look what's in, look what I have in the slime, you guys. I have penguin mini erasers. <clears throat> so, when they play in the slime, they can pick out the mini erasers. Look at that. There it is. So, and if you want to know um, directions on how to make slime, if you hop over to my Instagram, I actually um, did a highlight on how to make slime and actually showed how to make, I think it's this slime on there actually. Um, so yeah, but it's super simple to make. And if your slime is ever sticky, like if you have it out and it gets sticky and you're like, oh no, like it's sticking all over like crazy, just add some liquid starch and um, it'll kind of, it'll get unsticky again. So that's my trick to slime. And then here, oh, let me close this before I forget. So here's what some another fun thing you can do for your polar animal theme is just make some different shades of blues and purples and then let them paint. Just let them paint. And then what I gave after they painted their picture as they were painting, I gave each one of them a Q-tip. And then they just slid the Q-tip around, which when they're using a Q-tip, it's really, really great fine motor work and that pincer grass they're working on. Um, but yeah, so they just explore those different shades of blue and purples and we can pretend it's ice and then they can slide their Q-tip around um, to paint. So super pretty and super beautiful and super easy to prep. You can also paint on foil. Um, again, this is just a piece of foil and it's that paint. And if you want your paint to stick real, a little bit better, if it's like popping off, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, just put a couple drops of like dish soap, like Dawn dish soap in your paint and it'll stick a lot better. So yeah, so you can put either just some, because that's actually what I have at my easel. Right now I just have all the different shades of blue. I do have an orange and a black because one of my kids was like, I want to make a penguin and they needed some orange. So we put some orange out for them. <laughs> you can also do snowflakes with coffee filters. So I actually did this one right before I went live just to kind of show you, but just have them grab a coffee filter and you can either fold it in fours or they can fold it in fours. And I know you think it sounds complicated to make, have them make their own snowflake, but just have them, show them how to make just like two cuts, go like in and out on either side. And it doesn't have to be these magnificent snowflakes. Um, it can be super simple ones. And look, all they do is just drop. They can so they fold it into fours, and then they can make a cut on either side, and then they just drop liquid watercolors on it after. And if you want them to have their names on them, write their names in permanent marker before um, they paint. And then I just have this wax paper on the table to kind of protect my table. You can also use like a shower curtain. Um, but yeah, and make beautiful snowflakes. And these would make a beautiful bulletin board. Um, but it's also great, again, fine motor work, all that pinching and squeezing. And then this is just liquid watercolor. Here's all my beautiful liquid watercolor. I never put it on the table because every time I put it on the table, I feel like it leaks. Because look, y'all, I just got it on me again. And then you can also just do something super simple as just chalk and blue paper and just draw snow or just draw polar animals. 
So just, you know, explore chalk and how it feels. You can also explore how, um, like rubbing it or like making, you know, like a whole bunch. And you can talk about how you can spread it or you use, um, you know, all those different um, chalk techniques. So yeah, so, so fun. And look at, look at how cute those look up there, you guys. So, so cute, so cute. All right, I'm gonna show you blocks. Oh, here, look, I'm gonna show you pretend first. And then I'll tell you gross motor stuff too. I have gross motor ideas for you too. All right, so here is our pretend ice rink. So we actually made that sign last year and I kept it, um, but it was just a table time activity where they came in and just painted and then a little friend wrote ice skating rink on it with some paint. And then everybody always asks what I use for ice. So I took some two pieces of like long paper to the teacher store and they laminated it for me and then I just taped it together and then I taped it to the floor um, and then they just slide on it. I have socks on because my toes were cold you guys. <laughs> um, so they just slide around on it and they have to find their ice skates. So in order to sneak in some math we have different size ice skates. So we have size one, two, three, four, and five is in there <laughs> um, but they have to um, ask for the ice skate, ask what size, and they have to measure, like this one would be too small. So they would have to get a different ice skate. And then I didn't, we do have gloves out and scarves because if you put gloves out, it's a great way for them to practice putting on gloves. If you have kiddos that are struggling with coats, um, if you ask parents to donate some extra coats, Put out some coats and pretend and you can practice all of those self-help skills um, and pretend that way you can make going outside easier um, and then we have our shoe locker so they can put their shoes in the shoe locker and everything is labeled to um, add a whole bunch of literacy um, and then so I actually don't have this out yet this is the first week we're doing it but next week when we add it this will be hockey so they can play hockey at the ice rink. So these are, look, these are just cool noodles I cut in half. And then my laundry basket is the goal. And then they can just use the beach balls to play hockey um, when they go to the ice skating rink. And this is a really great gross motor activity too because we um, actually play hockey a lot during inside recess. Um, and I just got these little beach balls from somewhere, I don't know where but they don't hurt anything and they can, if they hit each other with these pool noodles, they don't hurt, knock on wood. <laughs> um, but yeah, just cut them in half and you can tell them how, you know, just be like a real hockey player and you gotta keep your sticks down, um, on, you know, close to the floor so they don't whack anybody in the head. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's a really fun way to get them kind of moving and grooving um, during those winter months, during play. And it's also, as they're balancing and with those on their feet and they're having to skate around, it's really good um, to build those leg muscles. So yeah, so that's one thing you can do in your ice skating rink. And then of course you have to have snacks at your ice skating rink. Oh, and all of the principles that you see in the ice skating rink are in my ice skating dramatic play pack if you wanna grab those. Um, but we have an order form. So that way, so that way can at, they can ask their friend what they want and then they can read the picture or the word and write it down. So again, more literacy and we have a snack menu. We have a number line so they can write receipts with this old school receipt paper. So they just cut off a little piece and then they can write their receipt and then all those numbers are right there to help them. And then here is our snacks. So, I just have an empty bottle of cocoa, some whipped cream, um, large and small cups, again, more math, um, ice cubes, a drink machine made from a shoebox. We have cookies, so my pretzels are starting to look a little sad, but we just made some with pipe cleaners, no big deal. Um, popcorn, which is just little clumps of paper, and they cut, we actually, they made these, the popcorn last year. When I taught, when I taught full day, we made a lot more props, but this year now that I do full day, we just don't have the time. So sometimes I use it from years past. Um, but they um, have they can make their bags, which is you can have them make props. 
for pretend, which is a great way to sneak in some literacy. Um, and it, when they make the props, they take care of them better. And this is just a box. And, a scoop. and you guys, you don't have to have super fancy like props. You don't have to have all Melissa and Doug. It doesn't have to be like all of these like fancy expensive props. Like look you guys, like I have cups, empty containers, a box, cotton balls. I do have wood cookies and then, um, you know, paper, paper popcorn, like nothing super fancy. And then for the ice rink, they, the workers can close the ice rink and they can clean it with some shovels and some buckets. Okay. So here's the block center. And again, I don't have super fancy stuff. I have cotton balls, balled up foil, gems. These cotton balls I got on clearance at Target. Um, I covered some triangle blocks and foil for icebergs. And then these are my winter stem. I can build cards. And then I have some, some sparkly foil from Michaels or felt that they can use for ice and water during their block play. And then I just have some, some animals. And a lot of these animals I, I have slowly bought over the years. A lot of the, the, the nice ones are from those and I, I just buy them when they're on clearance and sometimes like like I think I, this one's from like the dollar store so polar animals again are, there's I think they're kind of super hard to find and yeah you guys it doesn't have to be super fancy metal cans anything silver or white just throw in your block center if you have styrofoam um you can put that in the block center um that would be really fun and then one thing I actually started doing is something super simple. I just have been printing the pictures of their buildings from my phone. Just I just sent it to print on, from my phone, and then they have been loving looking at their friends' um, buildings during play. So I'll kind of show you one. So here is this one. This is um, a three and a four year old built this little guy, and then this one a pre K friend built. He made a polar bear, and he has his legs and his body, and he made his head out of paper. So totally all different levels, but yeah, really, really awesome play. And then I'm going to show you some science and hopefully get you guys excited. So, okay, go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Here is the recipe for snow dough. Again, four cups cornstarch, one cup oil, and use baby oil. If your kids don't eat things, if your kids do eat things, use vegetable oil. Um, and look, this is what it looks like. And it clumps just like real snow. It's awesome. It is a little messy because it does, you can kind of see it has like that. So I got a little coating on my hands. But yeah, so yeah, super fun. Um, for the sensory table or just for some science play. Um, and then don't forget, put some ice in your sensory table. Put, free some animals in some ice. I have a picture of that somewhere. Or better yet, make a snowman out of ice. So put some, fill up some water, some balloons with water, and then cut out some little felt pieces and make a snowman, and then watch him melt all day. And observe how he changes. And why do you think he's changing? So yeah, do a fun watch the snowman melt experiment. And all of this is that my snow and ice, um, my snow and ice science pack. And then here's my snow and ice science center. So they're looking at snowflakes. But yeah, so they're using the magnifying glass, which was on the table, I don't know where it went. Um, probably on another shelf. And they're just matching the snowflakes. So yeah, this is another really fun, really great for visual discrimination, really great for observational skills. And they're also measuring um, which one is the biggest. Alrighty, so that is our polar animal theme. I hope you guys had fun watching. I hope you guys are have a whole bunch of ideas you can take back to your classroom. Oh, one more thing, I forgot. Okay, so another fun thing you can do for gross motor during music and movement time is ice skating. So just take some paper plates and the kiddos can literally slide around. That's probably making you dizzy. But yeah, they can just slide around and skate around on paper plates. You can also have a snowball fight. You can totally tell we had our snowball fight. <laughs> um, but yeah, just take two, like a couple bags of cotton balls and they can just throw cotton balls at each other and it won't hurt. And if you want to be even, if you want, 
it's for them to work really hard, make it a rule they can only throw one snowball at a time. And that is a great way to practice that self-regulation. And if it's for more fun, you can draw a line, make a line down the middle of your um, area with tape. And then say, you know, the half of your kids on one side, half of them on the other. Okay, you know, who, who, let's see who can get all the snowflakes off of their side. And then play, I usually just play a kid's bop song. Um, and then, and then they just throw them like crazy. And that's a great way to get energy out. And it's a great way for them to practice overhand throwing or underhand throwing. Work on those upper arm muscles because... Um, it's really important to make sure we work out those upper arm muscles because these upper arm muscles have a lot to do with our fine motor muscles because our big muscles have to be strong before our little muscles can be strong because we develop from the inside out. So our core has to be strong and those upper arms have to be strong and those fingers. So yeah, so the snowball toss is a great, if your admin walks in and you're having a snowball toss, say, you know what? We are working on our upper arm muscles because we need, we need some more fine motor work. And in order for our small muscles to be, our tiny muscles to be strong, we have to work on these upper arm muscles. So we're having a snowball fight, but we're, we're working on our upper arm dexterity. So there you go. Upper arm dexterity on your lesson plans for a snowball fight. <laughs> so yeah, you just gotta word it right sometimes to do the fun stuff, right? Well, you guys have a good night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.